Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. November 20th, 2017. The Cooner Report, presented by Kelly Financial Services. Well, folks, welcome in. Good to have you with us. Here we come back to a brand new week on a Monday. Mike Siegel in for our good friend Jeff Cooner today. It's 12.06, and we get started right out of the box about Al Franken, a second accuser. And there is an organization, the National Legal and Policy Center, a group that promotes ethics in public life. That's kind of like swimming upstream against Hurricane Sandy, the superstorm, I suppose. But they do research, investigation, education, legal action. They say that bigger the government, the more opportunity for corruption, the more intervention in the economy, the more reason for special interest to seek influence. That, of course, we see with uh, our old friend, and I use the word old advisedly, Hillary Clinton, and the uh, pay-for-play problem as Secretary of State, among others. Be that as it may, this time it's about sexual harassment, sexual abuse, Al Franken. We know about Roy Moore as well, and let's get right to it. Peter Flaherty is the president of the National Legal and Policy Center. Mr. Flaherty, how are you today? Good, Mike. How about yourself? Doing very well, and I want to get right to it with you because before we get to your point as an organization as to what Mitch McConnell is doing to help Al Franken, uh, we now have a second accuser. Lindsay Menz has now said that Franken grabbed her butt while the two took a photo together at the Minnesota State Fair in 2010. She said, quote, he pulled me in really close, like awkward close, and as my husband took the picture... He put his hand full-fledged on my rear. It was wrapped tightly around my butt cheek. Franken says he didn't remember taking the photo. He felt badly that she felt disrespected. He takes thousands of photos, he says, at the state fair, surrounded by hundreds of people. And he says he certainly didn't remember taking the picture. He said, I feel badly Ms. Menz came away from our interaction feeling disrespected. We already know about Ms. Tweeden. Uh, the radio anchor in Los Angeles at KABC, and here we have now a second accuser of uh, an unwanted touching, which, by the way, is a battery when you un- unwant when you touch somebody in an unwanted fashion. Uh, maybe not criminal, but certainly civil, and so it's uh, it would be actionable theoretically. But as a practical matter, this guy's going through um, a lot of uh, trying to manipulate the terms of what happened or the degree to which it happened and the lack of remembering what happened, except for the fact that we had that photograph of Miss Tweeden on, on the airplane with him groping her in her breasts. Uh, we would not have maybe had the same admission from him. What about that second accuser now with regard to uh, Al Franken? Well, let's be clear. Uh, these media reports that say Al Franken has apologized are just plain wrong. With the skit incident with the fish lips with the first victim he said he has no recollection of it the second victim now comes forward he says he doesn't remember it so i think he's being given a pass and uh and all this goes to underscore uh, the point that i've been making in that uh it was a folly for mitch mcconnell to refer this to the ethics committee and it can only serve the purpose of uh, preserving al franken in the u.s senate when it's clear to me what he should do, and that's resign. Yeah, he, uh, according to you, to your analysis as your as an organization, basically you're saying that Mitch McConnell has done him a favor while really chastising and going after Roy Moore uh, with uh, with those allegations. Very credible. Uh, but the, the one thing about that case is that the voters of Alabama, if Moore stays in, have have the decision making authority in that case, and that's perhaps the way it should be. I did a piece about that for wrko.com if people want to take a look at it but the the point about uh franken is that it's graphic it's there uh and and mcconnell is now sending it to the ethics committee we need to understand that the ethics committee of the senate is basically a place where it goes to die i mean it just gets buried in there doesn't it that is correct and that's why al franken filed a complaint on himself with the ethics committee he knows that he can say in the interim that this is the appropriate venue for it, uh, this is where it's being dealt with, 
but we all know that the Senate Ethics Committee in the end is not going to do anything or is unlikely to do anything. But more than that, it uh, bursts the bubble. It uh, it, it uh, takes all the steam uh, out of any other alternative, uh, including the most appropriate one, is for, which is for Al Franken to resign. You know, there's a huge double standard here by Mitch McConnell. He wants the Senate Ethics Committee to look at Al Franken. But in the case of um, Roy Moore, uh, he's been trying to get him to withdraw from the race, uh, even though his name will be on the ballot uh, regardless of what happens because it's past the deadline. And if Moore were elected, I think the appropriate thing to do is for the Senate Ethics Committee to look at Moore if they're going to look at Franken. The dilemma for the people in Alabama right now is that these allegations cannot be proven or disproven before the election. So um, if they're true and Moore is elected, then the voters lose. But if uh, they're untrue, Moore has been the victim of a huge frame-up. Uh, so it's a dilemma. But why should Al Franken get um, this kind of uh, forbearance from McConnell, uh, but not, um, but not um, Moore? Uh, McConnell has been uh, actively undermining Moore's candidacy. He said uh, that he should get out. Uh, Senator Cory Gardner from Colorado, the head of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, says that if he's elected, uh, they will seek to expel him. Um, so let me, uh, Mike, tell you what's really at play here. This is not about sexual harassment. This is not about um, the Senate Ethics Committee. This is about the absolute panic that currently grips the Washington establishment about somebody like Roy Moore coming to the Senate. The problem for the Republicans is that they're dependent on corporate America for their support. And in recent years, over the last two decades or so, corporate America has been moving further and further to the left, especially on social issues. Uh, big companies are in the grip of the cultural left. And... Um, so what McConnell and the Gardner and the others fear is having to go and ask for huge amounts of money from these companies, and they're going to say, well, what about Roy Moore? That's what's behind this whole thing, and that's why we have this double standard. You know, that's a great point, and it's also a point that it's really Steve Bannon versus Mitch McConnell. Uh, look, Mitch McConnell is part of the uh, swamp, so to speak, that Trump was talking about, even though he has to work with him, and... Uh, so this battle is much bigger than just Roy Moore or, in the other case, Al Franken. It's about maintaining the status quo for the, for the well, well, that's, Republican that's leadership. Um, the, 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 the Senate uh, is a club, and uh, Mitch McConnell would rather rescue Al Franken and imperil uh, his own Republican majority than to allow a rube and a hick like Roy Moore to join the club. Now, Steve Bannon did not uh, invent uh, Roy Moore. Uh, he's been uh, in the public eye in Alabama for 40 years. He's been uh, twice on the state Supreme Court. He's been removed twice. So um, uh, Bannon didn't invent this, um, this divide. Uh, he may be seeking to exacerbate it now. But the real question is, at what point does it become untenable for congressional Republicans to be married to corporate America. I think it's time for a divorce because they have to go out and tell you and me one thing about where they stand or what they're going to do. Then they have to go and tell their financial benefactors something else, that they really don't mean it. And we've seen it uh, manifest itself time and time again uh, with this Congress and, and, of course, most dramatically with this fiasco around Al Franken and uh, Judge Moore. Well, the, the 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 big thing to me, because I was on the air in Miami in 1981 when the Mariel boat lift uh, really pounded South Florida, and Scarface was not very far from the truth, by the way, with Al Pacino. I lived through it down there on the air. But the fact of the matter was that that immigration issue from then to now has been huge because the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, funded by big corporate America that you just described, Mr. Flaherty, is an organization that has funded to the tune of about $80 million per election cycle candidates who are moderate Republicans in those primaries when Tea Party candidates ran to offset them because why? These big corporations through the U.S. Chamber of Commerce want illegal immigration to continue uh, just as Democrats do. Democrats because they want the votes, Republicans because they want the cheap labor. 
and uh, the Republican leadership won't tell the public this openly, but they'll do it and kind of avoid the immigration issue uh, because uh, they uh, don't want to confront dealing with uh, strong immigration laws, have not wanted to, and uh, they've been doing the bidding of these big corporations who want the cheap labor. Well, that's right. And um, the other problem for the Republicans is that corporate America in recent years has moved further and further to the left as uh, the Silicon Valley firms have uh, gained uh, more and more prominence within the economy. Um, it used to be uh, Pepsi and, and, and these other old economy companies that uh, pushed all these liberal things. Uh, but now uh, when you have uh, Google and Facebook and Apple and Twitter, uh, the executives of these companies are all um, left-wing. Uh, they're all um, extremely wealthy. Uh, they only talk to each other. And What about Amazon and Microsoft, Bill Gates and uh, Bezos? Well, and, and Amazon's probably the worst. Uh, Amazon is hollowing And now out. they have the Washington Post. Well, yeah, and uh, Bezos paid uh, $250, uh, $250 million in cash for it. It was such a pittance. Uh, and in the meantime, Amazon is hollowing out uh, the real economy. Um, when a retailer in a local mall goes out of business, um, jobs are lost. Money is not paid into the un- unemployment compensation fund. Uh, property taxes are lost, perhaps. Uh, but uh, Amazon gets bigger and bigger. Uh, it does not seek to profit. It has never sought to make a profit, unlike local businesses. And it doesn't need a profit to stay in business. It has always aspired uh, to monopoly status. And that's where it's headed now. And um, so Bezos recently gave a speech where he uh, advocated for a national uh, minimal income. So, in other words, as he hollows out the real economy and destroys real jobs and replaces them with with robots and and these massive distribution centers. And drones. Yeah, and drones and whatever. uh, He wants what's left of the old economy to uh, pay for the people he puts out of work. So, um, you know, I'm a capitalist. I believe in uh, uh, creative destruction and so forth. But we are now facing a situation with Amazon where um, it, it threatens to hollow out the whole Uh, old economy, and what I'm most worried about is its effect on the political system and civil liberties. Uh, If Amazon becomes a dominant force in every community in the the country, um, Bezos' left-wing political views are going to filter down with it, and it's going to affect everything uh, to the point where, um, uh, you know, right now we're facing a progressive assault on our civil liberties, and it's just going to accelerate, and and it's going to be a very difficult thing to oppose. Well, the, the bottom line of what you're just describing in this part of the conversation relates directly back to Franken because Mitch McConnell, is more, as you pointed out, is more willing to allow that kind of ideology seep more and more into the system than to control that situation uh, by staying out of the Roy Moore case. Look, the people of Alabama are going to have to decide this. Uh, these are pretty credible allegations and assertions, and maybe he should have dropped out. Well, he's not going to drop out, so he's going to be there. So the Alabama voters are going to have the ultimate right, which is the best version of democracy, to take care of this problem and decide one way or the other. Bottom line is uh, that what McConnell is doing is is indirectly enhancing uh, Bezos and his ideology because Al Franken has the same ideology. Well, that's right. And let's remember that um, it didn't take these allegations for McConnell... Uh, to seek the destruction of Roy Moore. Uh, during the primary, his super PAC spent uh, millions of dollars down there. Uh, much of the material and ads they ran was, um, I, I think the only way you can characterize it is vicious. And, and even after Moore um, won the nomination, uh, McConnell was trying to undermine him uh, in a variety of ways. So it's, it's quite remarkable that McConnell would rather uh, lose his Senate majority then do the right thing on, on Al Franken. It, it, well, it's, it's astonishing. We'll come right back. Peter Flaherty is with us. Good to have him here. As we continue along, he is the president of the National Legal and Policy Center. Much more coming. Mike Siegel for Jeff Cooner at The Voice of Boston, WRKO. It's 1220. We're back at it. Good to have you with us at The Voice of Boston, WRKO. Mike Siegel for Jeff today. Good to have you here. Of course, our number to Boston is 617-266-6868. 
Back we go with Peter Flaherty, who is here about the Al Franken case particularly, but a lot of other elements uh, motivating Mitch McConnell to do what he's doing about sending it to the Ethics Committee. Mr. Flaherty is the president of the National Legal and Policy Center. You know, it strikes me that there's another motivation here on the part of McConnell, Mr. Flaherty, and that is that maybe there are Republicans who could go under the same umbrella as Franken for behavior of theirs in the past, and therefore, if he were to uh, treat uh, Franken with disdain and demand or ask him to resign, he'd have to do the same with his fellow Republicans. What about that? Well, I think that's true. I think uh, McConnell understands that there may be Republicans who will have allegations come forward against them, and he doesn't want to set a precedent or get locked in. Now, while that position is morally bankrupt, it, it's at least rational, but that does not address the uh, double standard when it comes to his treatment of, of Judge Moore in, in Alabama. So, um, uh, you know, he can't have it both ways. And you know, by the way, he do. can't do anything about If Roy Moore is elected, Mitch McConnell is going to have to live with it because even if it were the Senate Ethics Committee, I know you, your organization filed a complaint about Charlie Rangel because he didn't report rent that he was getting from a, a home he owned in the Dominican Republic. But he, uh, uh, he was actually chastised, had to, re- had to uh, leave his chairmanship of Ways and Means in the Congress, in the House, and thanks to your complaint. But that was because of the huge outcry. Most of the time, ethics complaints never go anywhere. Yes, so, the House and Senate ethics committees don't do anything unless there's a constant, steady stream of news articles and pressure put on them. And that's what we were able to do in the Wrangell case. Every time things settled down, we would find something else and to be back in the news. So they had to act. But I believe if we were unable to generate all that attention, they would not have acted. And I think what Franken is banking on in this case, and, and what McConnell understands, is that when this thing blows over a bit, um, Al Franken will be perfectly safe. Is, the, is this uh, second... By the way, in my view... Al Franken needs to resign. I wrote that in the piece that I did for WRKO.com, which is up now. People want to look at it. But I think he should resign. Uh, I I think as a matter of honor, if there's any honor left in this individual, because there's also a lot of talk about uh, the way he spoke about women over the years in a very uh, derogatory fashion as sex objects rather than as respected human beings. So uh, a lot of that may wind up coming out now as well. And if it does, does that then add fuel to the fire, along with this second woman complaining about his behavior toward her, uh, to lead to the possibility of his having to resign? Well, I think so. And there could be a fourth woman, a third woman. (laughs) You know, it depends how many come forward. I think that um, uh, this folly of sending the thing to the Senate Ethics Committee can be overcome uh, if there's more attention and the pressure is just kept on, and, and that's what we'll be doing. Uh, in the in the uh, upcoming days, well, it's it's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, uh, it's good that organizations such as yours are, are staying on top of this. Uh, I, to me, it's very clear that the the graphic nature of that photograph of Al Franken doing what he did. How does a guy sit in the United States Senate on any committee? Committee. Uh, he did a lot of chastising of Jeff uh, uh, the the uh, Jeff Sessions, the Attorney General. <laughs> Uh, th- th- questioning him, how can he question anybody now? We have 45 seconds. Go ahead. Well, that's a good question. And, um, Mike, the reason we are so uh, attentive to this Ethics Committee issue is because NLPC was founded in 1991 as a response to the Senate Ethics Committee punting on the Keating Five uh, matter, which included uh, McCain, John McCain. And, 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 and four Democrats. And... Uh, they um, said that the they they, well, they weren't going to do anything, but senators should refer to Senator Paul Douglas's writings about this. What they were referring to was the uh, Code for Government Service. But they were so afraid of giving it higher standing, they wouldn't even call it by its real name. They just said Senator Douglas's uh, writings. So well, that's too much for us. We decided to um, form a group to expose corruption and promote ethics. The problem is that in the 25, 26 years, whatever it is, since we were founded, the situation has gotten no better. The Senate Ethics Committee has no more credibility, and left to their own devices, they will do nothing. And that's the case 
here with this Al Franken investigation. Mr. Flaherty, I appreciate your strong position. Thank you for it and your good work. Mike Siegel and for Jeff Cooner, we go to all the latest news. We're back at 617-266-6868 for your thoughts on this CD operation called the United States Congress. Stay with us. WRKO, the voice of Boston. We're back at it. Good to have you with us. Mike Siegel in for Jeff Cooner today. 1235 it is at 617-266-6868. What we have here, folks, is duplicity on the part of Mitch McConnell, as you've been hearing, because on the one hand, he is skewering Roy Moore. They spent tens of millions of dollars to defeat Roy Moore even before the allegations and assertions from the women came out about the treatment of Roy Moore when these women were underage girls. And it was way before that that there was an attempt to knock Roy Moore out of there. Well, that was because he wasn't going along with the program of the leadership, so-called, of the Republican Party in the Senate, which is to be very detached from the kind of approach of uh, nationalism, protecting America, uh, all of those issues. And that's what this is really about. Because what Steve Bannon, it's really Steve Bannon versus Mitch McConnell. What this is all about is America protecting itself, having a border protection. Now that the Customs and Border Patrol agent has been killed over the weekend, tragically, there's more uh, meaning to putting up that wall and creating greater security in this country for our borders. That's just one of the areas that they've been lagging on. Uh, the trade agreements that the Republicans went along with. There's a bunch of baloney and poppycock and balderdash because those trade agreements have done nothing but drain jobs from America. Now, Trump is trying to bring those jobs back through tax cuts and tax reform. So the bottom line is that the Republican leadership has really been entrenched with the Democrats, in effect, as a practical matter. We go to your calls at 617-266-6868. Your country is being taken from you not just by Democrats, but by Republicans at the top leadership levels, and that's what Bannon and people like him are fighting. Arthur in Chestnut Hill, you're on the Voice of Boston, WRKO. Hello there. Good. Uh, happy Thanksgiving uh, to you, uh, Thank you. Uh, Mike, and thanks for, uh, for coming in this week. It's, uh, you are my favorite, my, the best talk show host there is. But that, Thank you very uh, much. Uh, you know something? There has never been any, anything done to anybody uh, uh, by the Ethics Commission, number one. And, and number two, I, I believe that uh, uh, once they saw that Roy Moore was rising quickly in the polls, uh, that was going to be another Trump Republican, another anti-establishment Republican, and, and they see that, uh, uh, that uh, the Republican Party is not going to be the party that they want, the old boy country club Republican Party, the one that Americans don't want. And, and it's another way to to, us, to uh, sabotage the Trump agenda. It is exactly that. And it, look, let's face it, we know uh, from every report that's come out that even behind the scenes, uh, the, the Republican leadership uh, in the Senate has been against Trump to begin with. Take a look at Jeff Flake. It just happened. The senator from Arizona. He just said the Republican Party is toast if Trump uh, wins this battle. That's what well, he said. Well, well, you know something, and and that's why, and that's why, you know, th thankfully we 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 do have people who are starting to recognize what's going on, even though it's been in front of their face for the for for so long now that these Republicans are a bunch of phonies, and they're, and they're lockstep with Democrats and spending us into the Stone Age, and uh, and and just. You know, continuing the status quo, which will which will doom America. You know, uh, and, uh, and and it's sad to watch. You know, I'm at the end of my life, and, uh, and 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 it's sad to see what this country's become, and the kind of people who are more interested in representing people, you know, criminals than they are representing law-abiding American citizens. I appreciate the call, and I thank you. And you know, it's really profound when you think about it. And I want to thank the the uh, guest we had earlier because he's so correct at the National Legal and Policy Center, Peter Flaherty, the president, about the fact that they're protecting they're protecting Al Franken by sending it to the Ethics Committee where it'll get buried. And it's really more about the agenda. 
We want to get rid of the trade agreements. We want strong borders. We want to support our police. We want to have uh, a country that goes back to the values that made it great. That's what we want. And these guys don't want to do that. They want to buy into this globalism of Barack Obama, in effect, because they're getting bought and paid for in the Republican leadership by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the corporate members who donate money to that organization uh, for political purposes. Scott and Stoneham, we're at 617-266-6868. Scott, you're on WRKO, the voice of Boston. Hello. Hi, Mike. Uh, it's my contention that um, there is so much hatred uh, within the, the Congress and the Senate for Donald Trump. That I think that the, uh, the, de- the Republicans are actually almost colluding with the, with the Democrats to um, take him out of office. There's, they just hate him so much that they want him gone. And I think that the Republicans are perfectly happy with uh, the Democrats taking over the House and the Senate in the next election. And the first thing the Democrats will do is introduce articles of impeachment. And the Republicans are perfectly happy with that. I think they just want the status quo. They want to bring, bring back everything that used to be. And they just want to go along in their in their happy little uh, world that they all live in. They want Donald Trump gone. There's no question about that in, in the leadership. If you were to ask Mitch McConnell, even though his wife works for Donald Trump in his cabinet, uh, he would he would if you got him uh, under a truth serum, he would tell you that he wants him gone. And yeah. and really, it comes down to the points I made earlier. Uh, the, it's it's really unfortunate about Roy Moore and his whole situation because. I've got to say the women seem very credible. The woman who came out today uh, seemed very credible. Um, and, and it's unfortunate that this whole thing has come up. You know, the one question, of course, why did it come up now? Uh, right after he wins the primary and he's uh, running his campaign, all of a sudden all of this comes out publicly. The timing is strange, but the women seem to be very credible. Miss Nelson describing what he did to her in the car. Uh, when she was 16 years old as a waitress, and uh, she wound up with uh, black and blue and purple on her neck, wearing uh, scarves around her neck for several days till the swelling went away, and she didn't talk about it because people wouldn't believe her, and young people will say that in these cases. Now, I don't know what's true or false, but unfortunately that detracts from the real issue, because the real issue is what Roy Moore stands for, is uh, is very is basically what Steve Bannon has fought for when he was working for Donald Trump, uh, and even to this day, which is that we need to have strength in America, building up the military, uh, not not getting involved in all of these adventures overseas, but making it clear uh, that this country is back in business. And look, by the way, at the way in which Donald Trump has gone overseas and the respect that he's received. Fifty-five Arab leaders in the Middle East uh, met with him in that uh, incredible trip that he had to the Middle East, historic trip. Uh, he's, he's gone to Asia, as you know, just came back, China, uh, where he and President Xi had good conversations. The message is getting across, because right after that meeting, by the way, China sent an envoy to North Korea. Now, we don't know what was said. We don't know whether it was just uh, superficial and for image to show that maybe China was doing something or whether there was something tangible about that. Time will tell as to how much China intends to do to deal with all of these uh, these problems and these issues. But, you know, the bottom line is that Donald Trump is transforming America. And this tax cut and tax reform bill is part of that. We've already gone over 3% in terms of uh, gross domestic product, Do you realize that in eight years, which is, uh, what, 32 quarters, 32 three-month periods, not one of those quarters, not one of those three-month periods ever got to 3%. Most of them never got to 2% gross domestic product increase. And you need to have 3% or more to have a viable economy. He's the only president, Obama, in the history of the country that never got to that level. So Trump is reversing that. We've gotten to 3% in about every quarter that Trump has been there, including when the devastating hurricanes hit. And it would have been higher had it not been for those hurricanes, but it was still over 3%. So we're moving in the right direction. A million jobs have come back. Uh, Things have been much better. The consumer confidence level is up. 
It was 125.9 in October. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the highest since December of 2000. Employment for African Americans is the highest it's been since 2000. The U.S. National Home Price Index rose 6.8% in August. Home prices are going up. All-time high on the Dow Jones, as we know, in the stock market. The U.S. economy basically is outpacing expectations for the first time since April. So we're moving in the right direction. And we know what this tax cut and tax reform bill is going to do to just take the finger out of the dike and enhance the private sector and the economy to make it work effectively for the people. Well, guess what? We have to get this done. And it is the Republicans who need to be part of this not standing in the way of all of this. And as I said, strong immigration protection at the borders with the wall and other means. We need to get rid of these uh, trade agreements. We need to have one-on-one -on -one relationships, each country trading with each other country on their own agreeable terms. That's what free trade is. It's not some system that controls by unelected boards at these trade organizations the policies of our countries the Congress abdicated its responsibility when it allowed these trade agreements to take place because it's supposed to take care of, through the Commerce Clause, international trade. And they didn't do it. They turned it over to these other organizations. That's got to stop. And so those are the things that Roy Moore represents that really are the nemesis to Mitch McConnell. He doesn't want that kind of thinking in the Congress. He wants to go along to get along, period. Number to Boston is 617-266-6868. Do you feel as I do that our country is basically being taken from us and the only finger in the dike stopping that is Donald Trump? The very guy they're trying to get rid of in order to go back to business as usual. Because if he's gone, you go back to the trade agreements, you go back to open borders, you go back to all of those issues that in fact uh, will lead us back down the path of mediocrity certainly economically, and certainly in terms of national security. How nationally secure were we under Barack Obama, who, with, who held back Customs and Border Patrol and ICE from doing their job? Now they're allowed to do their job. And the morale there, according to all the reports, is hugely different today than it was under Obama. And so these are all areas that Roy Moore represents and frankly Al Franken is a guy who goes along with the program they'd rather have McConnell would rather have Al Franken hanging around than have Roy Moore win this election and I think by the way the best thing about this election is that it will be the people of Alabama who will decide I mean isn't it ultimately since we can't get this resolved legally before the election there's no way that can happen there's no way for uh, the allegations to be put in formal form from these women and then have a formal response from Roy Moore as you would in a, in a legal case where there were rules and protections for all parties. There's no way we're going to get that done. So the only other option is, is either that Roy Moore withdraw, which he won't do, or the voters of Alabama make the decision as to whether they believe the women and if they do believe the women, whether they think that's reason to disqualify, disqualify Roy Moore, and that'll be that. Let them make the decision. And that's really the way democracy works, isn't it? Because he's not in office now, and if there are any legal consequences he has to face, I don't know what the statute of limitations requirements would be. Some of these cases, and many of these cases are so old, the statute of limitations may apply, and there's nothing that can be done to prosecute him anyway. But putting that aside, ultimately, it's a moral issue, it's an ethical issue, and it's a political issue, and now that's appropriately where the people of Alabama are going to be able to make the decision. And let's let them do that. That's what democracy is. But in the case of Mitch McConnell, he doesn't really believe that, does he? How much money did he spend even before these allegations came out to have uh, Roy Moore defeated? Tens of millions. In fact, Roy Moore says it was $30 million. We don't know if it was that much, but it was plenty. We come back with lots more. Your thoughts are welcome. Are we losing our nation because of people like Mitch McConnell burying the Al Franken case 
and uh, trying to do business as usual and really trying to diminish the impact of Donald Trump as president. Number to Boston is 617-266-6868. That's 617-266-6868. Mike Siegel for Jeff Cooner. Good to have you with us at The Voice of Boston, WRKO. It's 1250. We're back at it. Good to have you with us on a Monday afternoon at 1255. Mike Siegel in for Jeff today. You know, Franklin Graham, the Reverend Franklin Graham, whose father, uh, Dr. Billy Graham, recently celebrated his 99th birthday. God bless him. Uh, Franklin Graham said this in a tweet. The hypocrisy of Washington has no bounds. So many denouncing Roy Moore when they are guilty of doing much worse than what he has been accused of, supposedly doing. Shame on those hypocrites. Let us remember, parenthetical to all of this, is all of a sudden Kirsten Gillibrand, the senator from New York, who was uh, a lackey of Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton for 20 years, getting funding from them, doing their bidding, treating them with reverence, all of a sudden decides that Bill Clinton should have resigned under the circumstances of what happened at the White House. You know, what really puzzles me is that they talk about that having been as a result of the situation involving Monica Lewinsky. As uh, grotesque as that was, it was voluntary. It was shameful, but it was voluntary. The one that he should have resigned over was Juanita Broderick, who he violently raped at a hotel in Little Rock. That's the one that should have sent him packing. We all remember the bloodied Juanita Broderick, who volunteered on his campaign. Paula Corbin Jones has state troopers bring her to the Governor Bill Clinton hotel room. He drops his pants and uh, shows his private parts and tried to get her to do some things to him that were Uh, grotesque, to say the least. Kathleen Willey, whom I've interviewed several times, comes out of the Oval Office, her blouse torn. As she described it to me, his neck was bulging, his face was red because she was not agreeable. He got violent, and she was lucky to get out of there. And she said it was only because one of his aides knocked on the door and said he had another meeting to go to. So he, he dropped his intent to do harmful things to Kathleen Willey. But Hillary Clinton doesn't care about that, doesn't want to believe them, even though she says believe the women. And nobody in the Democrat Party said a word in those days. All of a sudden now, uh, they want to uh, chastise Bill Clinton. Well, he should be chastised. But why is it so late down the road that this is happening? And that's pure hypocrisy is the point. And it was far worse, by the way, than what's being alleged of Roy Moore. And so uh, we see that happening. We see with uh, Al Franken uh, an attempt to try to cover this. Can you imagine if this had been a Republican? And a Republican had been groping groping a woman who was asleep on her chest area? I mean, Mitch McConnell wouldn't be protecting that person. The problem with Republicans is, is they eat their own. They treat their own more harshly than they do Democrats. And the point going back to the original conversation beginning this hour is that Mitch McConnell is protecting, absolutely protecting, Al Franken by putting this in the Senate Ethics Committee where it's going to go nowhere. Unless more stories break from other women about Franken, it's going to uh, die on the vine and uh, be business as usual. And that's the legacy of Mitch McConnell. Shame on you, Senator Mitch McConnell. Uh, Stand up and be counted instead of playing political games, protecting Democrats and harassing Republicans. Mike Siegel for Jeff Kooner. Stay with us. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 93.7 WEEI HD2 Lawrence Boston. It's 1 o'clock.